In the strategic waters of the Red Sea, an ominous shadow has emerged. A new weapon system, deadlier than anything seen before, has placed the global shipping industry on edge and sparked fears of a wider conflict engulfing the region. At the tip of these missiles lies a sinister partnership that threatens to tear open old wounds and change the balance of power for years to come. In the tumultuous waters of the Red Sea, a sinister force has emerged as the Houthi group wages an unprecedented assault on vessels, singling out Israeli and allied ships since April 2023. The gravity of these attacks became glaringly apparent in early December when both an American warship and a commercial vessel succumbed to the wrath of these strikes. What sets these maritime onslaughts apart is not just their audacity, but the utilization of weaponry so advanced that its origins cannot be concealed. It unmistakably traces back to the heart of Iran. In the intricate dance of geopolitical constraints, Iran, bound by restrictions barring engagement in ballistic missile activities and facing an arms embargo, has orchestrated a clandestine symphony of arms trafficking to supply the Houthi rebels. As a non-state armed group, the Houthis have, in turn, become adept craftsmen in the art of missile technology. With a particular focus on ballistic missiles that wield formidable power on the battlefield. At the forefront of this deadly arsenal is the Tuwan, a medium-range ballistic missile birthed in the Iranian design labs and initially known as Kion. Its genesis in 2004 marked a significant leap in long-range and capabilities building upon the foundations laid by the Shahab-3. This liquid-fueled marvel underwent meticulous upgrades to its engine, enhancing thrust while reducing fuel consumption. The guidance system received a technological facelift, elevating the missile's flight altitude, accuracy, and range to unprecedented levels. The baptism of fire came in 2006 during operational tests, with full-scale production commencing in 2008. The Tuwan's prowess is awe-inspiring, boasting a range spanning 1,118 to 1,243 miles and hurtling through the air at a max speed of 621 miles an hour. With the capability to reach Israel's southernmost city, Eilat, its warhead carrying a payload ranging from 1,543 to 2,250 kilograms ensures a devastating impact upon arrival. The Tuwan made its grand public debut in a military parade in September, a menacing testament to the technological strides achieved by the Houthi rebels, fueled and fortified by unwavering Iranian support. In the realm of short-range, solid-fueled missiles, the Houthi insurgents turned to the formidable Tank Hill missile, prominently featured in the 2023 military parade. Originating from Iran, it goes by the name Rod 500 or Zohair. This missile, hailed as a new generation projectile, weighs merely 1.75 tons, half the weight of Fate 100, yet boasts an extended range of 31 meters. The Tank Hill missile, also known as Rod 500 or Zohair, made its debut on February 9, 2020, in Tian, attended by the commander of the IRGC. Standing at a shorter length of 25 feet, its smaller warhead packs a robust explosive punch. What sets the tank hill apart is its unique design. It separates upon firing, automatically enhancing its evasiveness by making detection, tracking, and interception significantly more challenging than its counterparts. Another striking addition to the healthy arsenal is the Hatim or Karshikan, a medium-range ballistic missile with roots in Iran. The name Karshikan, meaning destroyer of Kar Fortress, pays historical homage to a Jewish fortress obliterated by Muslim forces in 629 AD. Similar to the Tamil, the Hatim showcases solid field prowess, solidifying its position as a potent force in the Houthi armament. The Houthi forces, for short-range solid fueled missiles in 2023, heavily rely on the Tank Hill missile, prominently featured in the 2023 military parade. Produced in Iran under the names Rod 500 or Zohair, this new generation missile weighs merely 1.75 tons, half the weight of Fate 100, yet boasts an extended range of 31 miles. Compact at 25 feet with a smaller yet potent warhead, 
Tamil separates upon firing, making it exceptionally challenging to detect, track, and intercept compared to its counterparts. In the same category, the Hatim or Karshikan missile stands out, weighing only 4.5 tons and measuring 34.4 feet. Hatim's compactness and rapid speed, reaching 7 to Mach 10, combined with a 91 mile range, make it highly effective in striking high value targets. Notably, Hatim is 100% Iranian in design and production, distinguishing it from other missiles that often mimic Western designs. The Hatim missile, with its explosive warhead, underscores its versatility by accommodating various launch platforms. The Houthi forces, lacking an air force, turned to the 358 anti-aircraft system for air defense support. This system gained notoriety during the interception of illegal weapons shipments from Iran to the Houthis between 2019 and 2021. Codenamed Sako, upon successful entry into Yemen, the Houthis claimed these missiles as self-manufactured. In terms of capabilities, the 358 missile is a unique anti-aircraft missile designed specifically for aerial targets. With a flying altitude of 6.2 miles and a maximum range of 62 miles, the Seiko missile combines features of a kamikaze drone and a mobile surface-to-air missile. It has found unity beyond healthy forces, with Hezbollah in Lebanon and pro-Iran militias in Iraq also employing it to counter Israeli drones and sea-based threats. Additionally, the Houthi arsenal includes a FAC or Kig Faz missile, a short-range supersonic anti-ship ballistic missile developed by Iran. Launched in 2011, it boasts an operational range of up to 186 miles and carries a 1,433 kilogram warhead. Notable for its sophisticated electronic system, the FAC missile precisely identifies and navigates targets with high precision, moving vertically after launch at supersonic speed. Among the array of missiles, the Quds-2, produced in Iran as Sumar, stands out as a cruise missile designed for sea and land combat. Costing less than a ballistic missile, this Sumar is named after a village where all inhabitants fell victim to a chemical weapon attack during Saddam Hussein's regime. Its cost-effectiveness and versatility make it a notable addition to the Houthi arsenal. The Sumar cruise missile, strategically designed for both sea and land combat, stands out as a unique asset in the diverse Houthi arsenal. Not only cost-effective, but also bearing the name of a village tragically affected by a chemical attack during Saddam Hussein's regime. The Sumar comes in three variations. While of Iranian origin, speculation hints at their design tracing back to the Russian K-55 missile, sold to Iran by Ukraine in 2001. With a projected range between 1,243 to 1,864 missiles, these missiles represent but a fraction of the expansive Houthi weaponry. Beyond the realm of missiles, the Houthi forces, confronted with the absence of an air force, turned to drones as a cost-effective tool for military and political intervention. Opening the Samad drones, named after the fallen Houthi leader Sal al-Samad in 2018, Three variants have been designed and produced by Houthi forces from 2018 to 2019. These drones, equipped for both reconnaissance and combat, boast an impressive range of up to 1,118 miles and a maximum flying speed ranging from 124 to 155 miles an hour. The Samad 3 drone, prominently featured in Houthi attacks, including the reported assault on Abu Dhabi International Airport in 2018, signifies the Houthi's prowess in the drone domain. Despite limitations such as slow speed and poor accuracy, the Houthi forces pivot to the Wade drone, an Iranian-made Shahed-136, notably for its prior use by Russia in the Ukraine war. Launched from Iraq, the Wade drone assumes a primary role in attacking ground targets from a considerable distance, featuring a range between 1,243 to 1,553 miles. Its application in the Yemeni civil war in 2020 and reported attacks against Israel underscore its versatile role in the evolving dynamics of conflict. Adding to their drone arsenal, the Houthi forces deployed the loitering munition drone, Kerry, claimed to be self-produced. 
However, its specifications align with the Ababil family of tactical unmanned aerial vehicles, manufactured by Iran Aircraft Manufacturing Industrial Company under the name under the name Hasi Ababil. Specifically, the Houthi used Ababil T variant, carrying a potent 66-pound warhead, found success in attacking Saudi oil infrastructure in 2019. Its effectiveness stems from low-flying capabilities, making interception challenging for ground-based missile systems. The Houthi drone arsenal, featuring the sophisticated Wade and the strategic Abba BLT, significantly shapes the conflict dynamics in the Middle East. So tell me, how do you envision the role of emerging technologies in conventional warfare in shaping the future of conflicts? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's spark a conversation on the evolving landscape of military strategies and geopolitical dynamics. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for future insights.